Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 14th, 11 and Border Works meeting. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, move on to the roll call members. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Gentry? Here. Becky McClure? Present. Bill Stoner? Present. Dick Robertson? He's excused. Alan Milburn? Present. Okay. Now move on to the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. And do we have two minutes or just one? Just one? So are there any changes or edits to the minutes from our previous meeting? Okay. And would entertain a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the minutes. We motion to approve. Is there a second? Okay. Motion is second. Judge McClure. All those say aye. Aye. As opposed? Those minutes are approved. All right, move on to department head reports then. First up will be Police Department, Chief Morgan. Good evening, board members. Since our last meeting, the Lebanon Police Department has responded to 667 calls for service. A total of 24 people were arrested for the following crimes. Five for operating while intoxicated, six were wanted on a warrant, two for possession of meth, one for dealing meth, one for possession of marijuana, one for possession of a controlled substance, three for domestic battery, one for battery, one for resisting law enforcement, one for disorderly conduct, one for trespassing, and one for residential entry. In that same time frame, LPD took 19 crash reports and a total of 10 handgun permits were sent off to the state for final approval. And then I added this in, uh, something I wanted to start doing from now on. For the month of February, our investigators had 21 new cases assigned, three cases submitted for charges, two cases submitted for review. The prosecutor's office requested follow-up on eight cases. Seven cases were closed. They assisted the road officers with one case. So we have a total of 16 current active cases for the investigators. February 28th to March 4th, officers Carlson, Kamaj, Du Bois, Edmonds, Thomas, and Winnings received their FTO certification from a course we hosted at LPD. Uh, FTO stands for field training officers. They're the officers that train all our new hires. March 8th and 9th, the SRT trained for two days um, last week. Uh, day one was building clearing at the old Reynolds Farm uh, Tractor Supply building. They trained with IMPD SWAT drone. Um, day two, the morning was their NTOA PT evaluation. That stands for National Tactical Officers Association. Um, they have a standard that you have to meet to be a part of the NTOA. Um, and from my understanding, a few of our officers uh, may have gotten sick after uh, <laughs> trying this. So uh, that's their new goal is to meet these standards. Um, so they did that in the morning and they also worked with the Fort Wayne SWAT drone. Then in the afternoon, they did firearms training out at our range. On March 10th, the drone team uh, worked on the indoor tactical flying maneuvers at uh, Reynolds building also. So. Um, the last two kind of go together. Our drone team is um, trying to get trained up, and they wanted to um, assist with the SWAT team on some of the call-outs. Uh, had a call-out um, uh, just a short time ago where the drone was sent into a house, and it actually potentially saved some officers from being shot. Um, the subject was waiting with a gun for them. So um, we've seen the need for it, so they're going to start training up and implementing that. That's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the board for Chief Morgan? Any questions from the public? Okay, thanks, sir. Next up is Fire Department, Chief Batts. Good evening, everyone. Since the last Board of Public Works and Safety meeting, Lebanon Fire has made 126 emergency calls of service logged 375 training hours, performed six commercial pre-plans, and completed 35 commercial inspections. 
I, along with Deputy Chief Robert Wiry, Battalion Chief Brian Cope, Captain Brett Klingler, and Lieutenants Jason Adams, Matt Young, and Noah Rinker, we completed ICS NIMS 400. NIMS stands for National Incident Management System. The 400 course is designed for a, a high-level command structure during <clears throat> mass casualty, uh, mass emergency events. As an example, we have a tornado come through town and we have multiple points of the city that are damaged, how we run an incident, incident command system through that. So it was invaluable training and uh, the officers who attended enjoyed it as well. Firefighter Sam Cornex continues to impress. He completed the Indiana State certification for Fire Officer 1. I can't say enough about Firefighter Cornex. He's just so dedicated. He's blowing through all these prerequisites and uh, working towards uh, his right out engineer and right out company officer. He's doing a great job for us. This week, LFD firefighters are completing their annual work performance evaluation. The WP is a time physical aptitude test firefighters must complete once a year. <clears throat> Excuse me. The WP is also used for a return to duty release for an extended illness or injury. March 13th through the 19th is Severe Weather Preparedness Week. The National Weather Service will conduct a statewide tornado drill 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, March 15th. That is tomorrow. In the event of severe weather, the test will be postponed and conducted on Wednesday, March 16th at the same time. The test will be in addition to our monthly siren test, which will still occur on Friday, March 18th. So I want to talk briefly about the tornado sirens because there's a lot of misconceptions. One being that tornado siren systems are designed to be heard inside a structure, whether that be your home or business or restaurant. That is simply not true. It is an outdoor alerting system for those folks that are attending outdoor events outside their home. <clears throat> so we get a lot of questions about that during tornado season, and I want to be very clear about that. Currently, all of our tornado sirens in the city of Lebanon are operational and being tested regularly. And then we'll get some questions. Uh, why didn't we test tornado sirens this week? And usually there's two reasons. One, there's inclement weather. If inclement weather is forecasted, we will not test the sirens or if it's below a certain temperature. And that's just because it's so um, hard on the turbines within the system. So we opt out of testing those weeks. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to contact me directly at Lebanon Fire, and I, I can clear up any questions that you may have. Sir? Uh, the what sirens will be activated on Tuesdays, what you're saying? Correct. Yeah, okay. Yep, it'll be a full test of our tornado sirens. Any other questions for Chief Batts? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Any questions for the public? Yep. Thank you, sir. Next is uh, Parks and Recreation, John Messenger. Good evening. Uh, at Abner Long Lake Park, uh, uh, the wooded area, they should be done with that, complete with that, <clears throat> excuse me, a week from this Friday. They'll start back up Wednesday. Weather got in their way a little bit, but uh, looks good. They're about 50% done, 75% uh, anyway. They'll be cleaning it up uh, starting Wednesday and all through next week. And there again, just hope for dry weather. Uh, that's what we hope. New playground equipment was delivered uh, last week, and little tykes will be assembling that soon. I uh, didn't speak with him today, spoke with him last week, and he's planning on getting out here this week and having a couple crews. That'll probably take about two weeks to three weeks to install, and then they'll put the no-fault surface down. The concrete has all been poured all for one section, so fencing to go up. Real excited about that project. Uh, there again, the light poles um, and fixtures were also delivered last week. Um, a few have been installed and they're lit right now, so if you want to drive through the park and see what it's going to look like. Um, there again, that project is not supposed to be completed till November, but uh, they'll turn on sections, quadrants at a time. They still have a lot of boring to do, uh, a lot of uh, uh, concrete uh, bases to pour and uh, poles to install. So. Uh, I'd say they're ahead of schedule, but uh, quite a bit to go. But it's really going to look nice. Uh, there again, both those pieces of equipment, the playground and the light poles, were ordered last June, and they just got delivered last week. So I think we saved some money, but my goodness, it took a while to get in. Uh, they're currently working on the infrastructure of the water plant located on the south side of Abner Longley, met with that construction crew along with Ryan Ottinger and Matt Hutley and uh, uh, looking good as far as that they hope to be out of our way for the big four trail by july 
excited about that. So we're both kind of working in that area and everybody's being nice right now, both construction crews, Calumet also is working on our big four. So it's nice to get everybody together and get on the same page. Uh, there again, they have a lot of infrastructure to put in because there's a lot of water down there. It's like a little pond in itself if you've been down on that uh, uh, southeast side of the park. Uh, the restrooms at Abner Longley Park and Memorial Park, uh, the one at Memorial Park near the playground, uh, we'll open them up by the weekend. Uh, they'll be open from dawn to dusk. The restroom near the baseball field at uh, Memorial Park will remain open like it has, but dawn to dusk is what we're going to close the ones down at Abner and Memorial Park by the playground. So uh, just wanted everybody to know that. Excited about getting those opening. Um, our pool party dates are slowly dwindling. We have one full weekend left in June and only one date in August. So there's three dates open. Um, if you want a pool party, you better get it booked. And uh, we'll be open at 8 o'clock in the morning. However, uh, you probably can get online and go ahead and uh, pay and, and get it get it scheduled. You know, we'll be announcing our spring break fitness challenge this Friday via our social media. Everyone that completes the challenge should stop by the park office to receive a prize. More details will be posted on the park's social media. Um, also, our Spring Pickleball League is now open for registration. We have six different divisions are offered. Uh, registration will close on March 31st. And our annual Easter egg hunt will be held on Saturday, April 16th. The first hunt will start at 1030 in age groups 2 to 4, 5 to 7, 8 to 10. And uh, just uh, the, I want to thank Miss Bohanna's class from the high school. She's stuffing over a million eggs, I'm telling you. There's going to be a bunch. Uh, there again, we, we did also have new hire lifeguards certified over the last two weeks. I want to thank them for completing that. I think there's two that haven't been uh, uh, certified, and we've got all our older, uh, uh, every two years we have to recertify, and they've all recertified. So we just have two out there hanging, but they will uh, get those done. And then have four guys going to Purdue University tomorrow to test for their uh, category license. And I uh, wish them the best of luck. I'm sure they'll do well. And uh, no, no snow, Mayor, so you don't have to worry about any more snow. Any Stop. Snow. You can't say that word. Don't say that word in these meetings. <laughs> you didn't jinx us. That's all I had. Thanks, John. Any other questions for John from the board? No. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the public? Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right. Next up, Engineering Department, Cameron Krillick. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, engineer report for uh, 314 Pi Day. I wouldn't be an engineer if I didn't mention it's Pi Day. <laughs> Not the kind you eat, but the 3.14159265359. Nerd alert. That's as far as I can go. But, uh, thank you um, for indulging me on that. Uh, projects around the city, Whit Road Bridge, uh, just remind one starting June 1st, wrapping up before school starts. Our Indiana Department of Natural Resources fish spawning waiver was filed on March 1st. Uh, they have 30 days to review that before they comment. Shouldn't be uh, anything of concern, but that should, uh, that's one thing we have to get out of the way before construction starts. On the road project, uh, remind you, we submitted uh, for 2027 uh, fiscal federal monies, um, fiscal year federal monies, to reconstruct Whit Road from Lafayette Avenue to Austin Drive. Award is expected by the end of the month. They can push that back this left a week ago. So I'm now told it will be made by the end of the month. Elmwood Bridge, uh, we're still waiting to hear on our community crossing announcements. Uh, sometime in April typically is when those come out. But plans have been finalized, permits have all been filed. Uh, we're in good shape, ready to hit the ground running uh, as soon as we know what our grant picture and our funding picture looks like there. Uh, Grant Street Project, uh, just remind one, letting is set for May 5th. NDOT will be conducting the letting or the bidding process, as, as uh, they like to call it letting, but as we're used to calling it bidding. The project will be built in two phases. Uh, William Street from Grant Street to the bridge there just west of Ann will be built first. It will be built this summer uh, while school is out, so from 6-1 to 8-1. And then next year, uh, next summer, we will be building the rest of Grant, the Grant Street project from Washington north to the uh, intersection of Fordyce uh, to complete that project. 
There's still a Grand Street Phase 2 that was also submitted for 2027 fiscal year federal monies. Again, we'll hopefully hear something at the end of the month, about two weeks from now, on if we were successful there. Uh, Fort I Street, really nothing to nothing to report other than right away is still progressing, and um, we're looking at 2024 construction. Uh, John did a good job summing up what's happening on the Big Four Trail construction. Not too much to add there. Uh, in the last week or so, we did complete the tree clearing though along the right of way. Uh, so Calumet did that. Different contractor that's clearing in the park. Uh, those trees are now all down along the road. Um, rule section plans have also been filed with DNR for review. And the final rule section land acquisition uh, transfers are now, uh, are now complete. Uh, jumping up to the bike park project, uh, construction documents are expected to be finalized this week. Uh, landscape plans have already been filed with the county. Our landscape architect is actually meeting with county officials tomorrow uh, to better explain the project uh, per their request and uh, hopefully move uh, some of those landscape uh, questions forward. Um, we were successful at executing the off-site drainage easement with the Trophy Club. That has been executed and now recorded. And uh, we're still uh, working through tree clearing. All the trees are now on the ground, and uh, we're just cleaning trees up. We are mulching trees and spreading those across the disturbed ground for erosion control protection and doing some on-site forestry mowing. And we've also set aside um, you know, about 30-some about trees uh, that will be used to build bike park features to help defray costs. So every material we can mill out of our own lumber is, mill, is material we don't have to buy. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that. We've got some good specimens there to build features with. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot to report. You know, we've worked through budgets based on the updated county requirements, primarily from landscaping. That added a lot of uh, cost to the project. The item requirements have also been factored in. We're going to be doing some additional budgeting exercises as we wrap up plans this week. And uh, fundraising is also uh, resuming on the bike park project. Uh, active living programs. Haven't talked about active living in a while, but I uh, wanted to let everyone know that the, uh, the Northfield sidewalk projects, if you remember the water main project that went through the Northfield area last year, we did about half the sidewalks after they got done. Then we ran out of money, we ran out of weather, and uh, but we're back in there with a refreshed budget this year to uh, tackle Fair Lane Drive, uh, the remainder of Syracuse Drive, the remainder of Garfield Street, uh, and get those sidewalks replaced on both sides of the street. Uh, tree clearing actually started today, and we'll be starting driveway approach and sidewalk work around the 1st of April. Uh, on our MS4 and inspection front, uh, the website is still under development. Uh, inspections in the last two weeks, we had 20 uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan inspections. We had seven right-of-way inspections. Uh, we inspected on three different complaints and two uh, cases of illicit discharge. So that's all I have. Thank you, Kevin. Any questions for Kevin from the board? Mm -hmm. Any questions from the public? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Next is Planning Department, Ben Bottrigger. Good evening, board members. As you can expect, the planning department is really starting to gear up for spring, spring construction season if we really even slowed down this winter. Uh, this last uh, couple of weeks, we did complete a, an additional 72 building inspections, so we're doing about seven inspections a day between our two guys. Uh, I was kind of looking, I think, you know, depending on the types of inspections they do, we could probably do about 10 a day with the, the, those two guys, so we still have some room that we can add as we, we see activity picking up, which we certainly expect over the course of the year to be able to get to close to 80 to 100 inspections every couple of weeks. So we'll just have to be really efficient. I think over time we're going to get come close to that number um, this year uh, as we move forward with all the projects we got going on. Uh, we did also issue 36 permits the last couple of weeks, including five new home permits. So again, still seeing really strong activity there. Um, on the continuing education side, I know Kevin talked a lot about Stone Eater and things going on there. Uh, here in a couple of weeks, both myself, Derek Warren, and Joe LePage are going to be attending a uh, sustainable trails conference down in Arkansas. Uh, and this is going to be really helpful for a lot of us to be able to understand as we move forward with the Stone Eater Bike Park, both how to build and maintain sustainable off-road trails, but then also this will provide some guidance on fundraising, marketing, and management things that, that we'll be doing both as we're, we're developing the park, but then also after the park has been built. 
and to marketing that to folks that both live in the area they might be attending coming from uh, elsewhere to come to this area so that'll be a good conference for us to get some background on some of those things and really apply those here in Lebanon in terms of other projects we've got going on um, Later tonight at the council meeting, uh, there's an additional appropriation on their agenda for the update to the Unified Development Ordinance. Um, if that is approved, then I'm hoping to have the uh, contract on your agenda for approval, either your second meeting this month or more likely the first meeting in April, considering I won't be here for your second meeting this month. Um, and we're really hoping to kick that project off in the month of April and have that completed before the end of the year. Uh, it's essentially gonna be almost a wholesale rewrite of the UDO when I started looking at it with a consultant. The, the, the scope of it really grew uh, as I, I was looking at the updates I wanted to do. So it is a, a pretty major rewrite of our unified development where it's really adding things that I've seen over the last five years uh, that we think to make ourselves more efficient and also make sure we're getting quality development in the city. Um, another thing I just wanted to announce, um, the uh, shell building project that's out on State Road 32 west of town. Uh, we did close on the property uh, with the, the, the landowner uh, just this last Friday. Um, so that's now in GM Development's hands, who's managing the project for us. And I believe the uh, transfer then to the Redevelopment Commission should be happening relatively quickly as, as, as well. So the, the Redevelopment Commission will own that property and building until <coughs> such time as we sell it to an appropriate user. Uh, so that, that is moving forward, and that project has actually already submitted a primary plat and development plan for the April Plan Commission meeting. So we're moving forward on the planning approvals for the shell building and should hopefully see construction late spring, early summer on that project. Um, other projects that are moving forward, uh, the plan unit development rezone for the Fieldhouse project is actually on the March Plan Commission agenda. Um, so we'll get the rezone approved hopefully before the end of this month. Um, and we actually did have a call with our legal team and some of their representatives this afternoon and they're really pushing to try to get the bonds closed sometime in the month of May so they can be under construction before the end of May of this year. So really that's moving along very quickly um, and that's exciting to see that going. In terms of other projects that are coming forward, the Plan Commission, Hachette is doing a, an expansion of one of their warehouses out in the business park, and that'll get, that's going to be approved uh, this month at Plan Commission. Um, and then also, Peterson Company is looking to build a couple of industrial buildings out at Enterprise Drive there, right by State Road 39, um, uh, the entrance there on State Road 39. Uh, there was a project that was approved back in 2018 for a couple of industrial buildings that never went forward. Uh, Peterson Company has now come forward and has purchased that property, and they're going to build those two buildings out there. So, a lot of good, a lot of good projects moving forward this year, and a lot of activity behind the scenes that, that we're working on that will be moving forward later this year as well. And then just to clarify for me, that's the Hendrick site, right? Yes, that's the old okay. Hendrick site. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And that's all I got. Thank you, Ben. Any questions, Alan? Just a general information question. When we talk about building inspections, what drives that number? Is it just a normal routine of inspecting them, or is it the new construction or complaints, or what, what gets into that driver? Yeah, so, so that building inspection number is, is new construction, remodels, additions, things like that. So in terms of uh, complaints and things, those are all uh, calculated separately in our code enforcement numbers uh, that I provide also. But yeah, building inspections is all is all construction related. Thank you. Any additional questions for Ben? Any questions from, from the public? Okay, thank you, sir. Next is uh, Dave Newell, our Street and Stormwater Department. How's everybody doing? Good. You're enjoying the weather we are <laughs> uh the guys have been pretty busy keeping the drains cleaned off you know uh, ahead of the rain trying to keep our roads from flooding out on us so they're doing a good job with that uh we did treat some roads last thursday we had a little bit of slush and i uh snow mixture not sure it did anything because it ended up clearing up but we didn't want anybody to have any accidents so we did go ahead and do it we used just 65 tons of material for that event and on that note, uh, just so you know, for the 2021-22 20, season, um, we ordered, for that season we ordered like last year as follows, because it comes around June is when we start doing our uh, salt bids, uh, $90,000 $90, or $362.69 for uh, 1,008 tons is what we had for this season. Uh, so far we have spent $61,277.45. 0.45 and we use 718 tons of material we are at our max uh, you can go we can go 100 and I believe it's 20% over what we actually order 
And that usually what it does is we, we do that so that it falls into place. Even though we're at our max, we still have 400 tons of material at the shop because it's carried over from last year and that's the way it just works. And, and we, we plan on that to last us through till, you know, if we get any snow in October, November, December, that'll carry us through that month until our next budget kicks in and then we, that's how we work that. Just to, I don't know, you know, just something you guys might want to know and keep you up to date on it, but that's how we play that. So even though we have some money in there, that money will go until to finish us off to start the new budget next year. Um, we have been out cleaning up the easements around town from all the winter trash. I don't know, I mean, it's common sense to me, but this reminder to people that, you know, don't throw your trash out, throw it in the trash can. City has plenty of trash cans around town. I don't know. Take it home, throw it away. It's just frustrating, you know, when you're by the schools and our main thoroughfares to see bags of Hardy's trash. Or I mean, it's, I don't know why you throw it out the window? I can't understand that for myself. But I understand we get windstorms and it blows people's trash. But just to throw bags of trash out don't make no sense to me. Uh, you know, it just looks horrible. But yeah, just throw it away. I know that's kindergarten stuff, but just a reminder, I guess. Uh, we did go out uh, today and cover up some curse word, curse wards and gang signs at the Noble Street Bridge. We were heading to the Camp Street Bridge, but they're getting ready to start cleaning that again. So if we get any on there before they do, we'll cover those up as well. Uh, if you ever do see those, don't hesitate to give us a call at the shop at 765-482-8870. We like to get those covered up before the kids are walking to school. You know, nobody wants to see them. I don't want to see them either. And, you know, it just, um, I don't know why. I think it's these kids' things, I guess. But uh, We have been out picking up brush from our last storm event. I believe we had five trees down that Saturday night, Sunday morning. Um, so we were pretty busy with that. Uh, thanks to Ben Phelps for uh, giving us a shout-out, let us know some of them were down. And... Um, you know, all the LPD guys, I mean, they put cones out on them to help us till we could get to the next one, so it was a good good effort by them in helping us out. A uh, reminder that spring cleanup is just around the corner. It'll be Friday, April 29th from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then just to remind everybody, it is Saturday, April 30th, but it's only 7 to noon. So we used to go till 4, but we only go till noon now. Uh, that was raised to changing it up. Uh, and this event does happen rain or shine. Uh, no electronics or televisions will be accepted. Also, no hazardous materials, no tires, no oil-based paint, stuff like that. They will accept water-based paint, but you just have to put some kitty litter in it, leave the lid off, let it dry hard, and then they'll take it. They'll even take that with your regular trash at this time, as long as it's dry. They just they can't put it in a trash truck and mash it and leave paint through town. That's just what that falls under. Uh, they do accept refrigerators and air conditioners. We get a lot of calls asking about that kind of stuff. Like freezers, washer dryers, we take all that kind of stuff. So, Golf carts, we take it all, believe it or not. But, uh, crew's been out patching some potholes. I know this ain't, and we're plowing it back out here lately, but it's temporary, so don't worry too much. It's because we have to use cold mix till the plants open up. We're, I think around the third week of March is when they're shooting to be starting to open up, but it just depends on the weather. So hopefully we'll get some better mix out there. Let's all cut them up and you know, make them a lot better. Um, and if you do see any, don't hesitate to call the office at the same number there, 765-482-8870. It just helps us to get ahead of them, especially in the alleys and stuff. We eat down the alleys a lot, so that's huge, huge to let us know about those and helps us out. Um, we do have three people attending road school next two days, so we got that event coming up, so we'll have three people there. Those are usually pretty interesting. Good classes. It's a, we missed it last year. I think they did it virtual, so, or they might not even done it at all. But so hopefully we get back and things are starting to get back to the way they used to be. Uh, only last request I'd ask is that the mayor changes his time change thing back to the way it used to be. If he can cut any kind of pull, it's losing the hours kind of tough. You know? Above my pay grade, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so I can throw it out there, but yeah, that's all we got. Thank you, Dave. Any questions for Dave from the board? Anything from the public? Thanks, sir. Thank you. And last but not least, communications and community development. We have Matt pitch hitting for Joe tonight. Good evening, board. Pass along a few things uh, from Joe LePage in the communications and uh, community development department. 
Uh, last week, uh, they hosted the second of the Community Creation Days, hosted at the Craft Room downtown. Uh, tremendous turnout uh, from the crowd. They had a uh, Lego Masters Builder icebreaker that led uh, to some fun discussions. Uh, they also talked about the community creative celebrations, uh, an, up an upcoming downtown creative space, uh, the upcoming mural on State Road 32, the railroad bridge, and also the formation of a creative support organization or an arts council or an arts commission. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of effort and discussion made uh, last week, last Thursday night. Uh, Joe has been hard at work uh, with some video recordings. Uh, I think some of you have seen the Stone Eater Bike Park has started. Uh, he's releasing some footage of that. He's going to have monthly updates along that and collaborating with city engineer Kevin Krulik on um, how that park is coming along and kind of video the changing and, and how everything is coming together with that park. So keep an eye out for, for the Stone Eater updates on a monthly basis. And then he also was able to tag along with the Lebanon Police Department. Chief Morgan touched on it uh, about the SWAT training. So they were able to get some footage of the training, both uh, during some intense and often violent situations. Uh, Sergeant Ryan Williamson with LPD was able to provide some verbal recap of what was going on and um, further detail the SWAT training process. So uh, that's something that'll be coming up in the near future that, that Joe and his office have been working on. And lastly, uh, uh, some advertisements. Uh, the ad has been approved for the Indianapolis Monthly Magazine. I think some of you may have already seen on social media the Travel Indiana advertisements already running, trying to get people to know a little bit more about Lebanon, uh, that we're not way out there. And, uh, Joe's working on his new Hey Neighbor campaign, which he met with the Steve Hinkie development team to help be a part of that process to kind of help put Lebanon on the map again. And he has a uh, meeting scheduled, uh, he, Joe, has future meetings scheduled with other area builders to, to jump on board and collaborate with that Hey Neighbor campaign. So something else to, to look forward to and um, start getting some more recognition of, of what we're doing around here and, and how we're growing and some of the fun things that, uh, that we have going on in our community. Okay, thank you, Matt. Any questions for Matt? Anything from the public? Okay, thanks, sir. Okay, that concludes department head reports. Move on to old business. I don't have anything on my agenda. Is there anything from the board? No, oh, none. Okay, new business then. First item up is a street and sidewalk closure request at 107 Main Street. Kim Krillick. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, closure request at 107 East Main Street. Um, in fact, if I can share my screen here, I can show you exactly where we're talking about. So there you go. Uh, recently, there was a, uh, an RDC uh, facade grant request for uh, a lot of work on that building, the uh, Tribbett Rich Insurance Building. Uh, owned by RT Investments Group. And uh, from what I understand is uh, in the process of that work, they discovered some really damaged uh, structural steel just above the storefront windows. And fortunately, it's going to need to be replaced. So to do that, they need to bring in crane equipment and stage that equipment uh, on the sidewalk area and in the parking spaces uh, so that they can make the necessary repairs to the structure of the building. And to do that, uh, they have requested and we are supporting uh, the closure of those uh, three parking spaces in front of their properties there, uh, as well as a partial closure of the sidewalk uh, during the day uh, at night, though, the, there will be a three to four foot wide clear zone that's open for, for pedestrians to get through on the sidewalk, but they'll close it during the day while they're working overhead when safety is an issue. Uh, so again, this is a closure request, a uh, right-of-way closure request. We will process all the necessary administrative permits for work within the right-of-way, uh, but we're recommending approval of the requested closure. Uh, Kara Shepard with, the, uh, with uh, Trip Rich is, is in the audience if you have any detailed questions for, uh, for her. Uh, but if there's anything else I can, uh, I can offer, we're happy to do so. But uh, they do have our support for this. Any questions for Kevin from the board? No. Oh. Any questions for Kara? Okay. Then I would entertain a motion to approve the street closure request for 107 Main Street, um, sidewalk and parking spaces from March uh, 15th through April 5th. I would make a motion to approve as presented. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second from Bill. All those there say aye. 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 Opposed? That is approved. Thank you very much and appreciate the work you're doing on the building.
Okay, uh, next up would be a memorandum of agreement with the 11 Fire Department. Chief Batts. Good evening. The memorandum of agreement that you have in front of you outlines the format for reimbursements for city, towns, and municipalities for members, department members who are dispatched through Task Force One. Currently, we have one member, Lieutenant Jason Adams, who's a member of Task Force One. And this memorandum of agreement uh, is used in the city of Indianapolis. And the Cliff Notes version is if we, excuse me, if FEMA dispatches Task Force One in the state of Indiana and calls up Lieutenant Adams, this, his wages would be reimbursed to the city and not only his wages, but if we were left below minimum staffing and we had to use overtime, we would use these monies to reimburse the overtime line to augment staffing while he's gone. And just to clarify too, Chief, this is a pretty standard agreement this that all the departments, that, uh, all cities have with the Correct. With this task for fun. standardized agreement that the city of Indianapolis developed and everyone is using this agreement. Okay. Any questions on the agreement from the board? No. Okay, then I would make a, uh, do you need my signature on that or is it your signature? I've got to look at that. Um, I believe it's everyone. The board's, okay, never mind then. Oh, everyone, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, with that, would you entertain a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement? I make a motion we approve the memorandum of agreement, Lebanon Fire Department. We have a motion to approve, is there a second? Second. Second from Judge McClure, all those ever say aye? Aye. Uh, opposed? All right, that is approved. So we'll sign that after the meeting. Okay, uh, any, thank you, Chief. Any other new business from the board? No. Okay, any public comment? Okay, then I would move on to the claims and entertain a motion concerning the claims. I make a motion we approve the claims. The motion to approve the claims, is there a second? Second. Second from Allen. All those here say aye. 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 It's opposed? Claims are approved. approved. Any announcements or discussion? Council. Okay. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Sorry. I guess they didn't want to leave. Uh, next Board of Works meeting will be Monday, March 28th at 6.15 p.m. The Redevelopment Commission is up next.